All right, so hand arthritis. What is hand arthritis? Um, hand arthritis would be the next Try the one arrow. for the arm. <laughs> hand arthritis will not stop me from doing a presentation. There we, there go. we go. All right, so what is arthritis? And if you have seen me in the office, know that I love this, uh, this, this description of it. Itis just means inflammation, okay? It doesn't have any special meaning. It has nothing to do with your joint. Think about tonsillitis, appendicitis, all right? All these things just mean inflammation, but any of you Greek scholars out there or Latin scholars know that arthra stands for joint, and so basically arthritis is inflammation of your joint. Plain and simple. Now, when we talk about uh, arthritis, a lot of people talk about, oh, I think I have bursitis. No, 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 no. Let's get this straight. You've got stuff that's on the outside of your joints and you've got stuff that's on the inside of your joints. Your tendons and ligaments are on the outside of your joints and they certainly can get inflamed and sprains and strains and tendonitis, hear that good old fashioned itis again. You can certainly sprain and strain the soft stuff that's outside of your joint, but arthritis is the problem on the inside of your joint. Oopsie daisy, I think we went, did we skip one? What is a joint? And again, we see everything that's there. So what is cartilage? Well, you see here, this is not a chicken bone. This is actually a human elbow, all right? So if you take a look on the inside of our joints, just like you see in a, 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 in a chicken bone when you crack open that leg, you see that white shiny stuff. But you're also gonna see on this picture that there's some yellow areas. And those yellow areas are where the white shiny stuff has begun to wear away. And that's what arthritis is. It's when that shiny white Teflon coating called cartilage inside of your joint begins to erode away. And as it begins to erode away, you now lose your lining. And as you lose your lining, your bones start to rub together and they hurt. All right, so on the, on the one side of the screen, beautiful and smooth. This is looking inside somebody's uh, a knee joint, actually. And then you can look on the other side and you can see all the fraying that can happen to that beautiful white stuff. And that is arthritis. Unfortunately, arthritis can not only go from fraying to actually losing its complete integrity. And you get to that picture of that beautiful knee right there. And that person's in the process of getting a knee replacement for a very good reason. You can see there's no more cartilage left on the end of their bone there. That's the end of their femur. And that could just hurt like heck as it's rubbing on the bone that's underneath it. So that's the problem with arthritis, right? The joints lose their lining, they lose their smooth integrity. And what happens is that this begins to slow you down. Those joints feel achy in the morning. We call it the Tin Man Syndrome. You get up in the morning and you just can't move until you start to move. And then as you start to move, the joints will begin to lubricate themselves and you're gonna feel like you can get moving again. There's two big kinds of arthritis. People always say to me, oh, are you sure it's not rheumatoid? Or, oh, I hope it's osteo. Okay, two types of arthritis in the big picture of things. You can get arthritis because, you know, when you were 12 years old, you fell out of a tree and you shattered a joint. And then by the time you're 30, it hurts. That's called post-traumatic arthritis. But for most of us, when we get arthritis, it's because either one, we have osteoarthritis, which is thank you, grandma and grandpa. That was their gift to you. It's genetic or it's rheumatoid arthritis, which is also genetic, but it's an autoimmune disorder. And what do we mean by that? We mean that your body starts to think that the thing that's inside your joint shouldn't be there and it attacks it. Your own immune system attacks your joint. So that's the difference between osteoarthritis, which is just a program breakdown of your cartilage because that's what genetics tells it to do, versus rheumatoid arthritis, where your own body begins to attack itself. So again, osteoarthritis can be genetic or because you fell out of that tree. And what happens is that joint lining begins to erode away. And as the lining begins to erode away, like you saw in that knee, what happens is, is that the, the joint becomes unstable. Like, oh my God, I'm riding on this uneven surface. And the body is a beautiful thing. What it does is, as it starts to feel unstable, it says, well, let me build a little spur over here because that'll make me more stable. Oh, I'll, I'll put another spur here. Well, next thing you know, you got lumpy, bumpy joints with bone spurs in addition to the loss of your cartilage, all right? Now that's different than rheumatoid arthritis. In rheumatoid arthritis, as we said, your own immune system begins to attack that shiny white tissue or the ligaments around your joint. There's a billion types of rheumatoid arthritis and I am not an expert. That's why there's rheumatologists. 
but there's all kinds of rheumatological diseases. And some of them attack your cartilage, some of them attack your ligaments, but in any case, your own immune system begins to destroy your joints. Either way with rheumatoid arthritis, it tends to start with, if you look at your body, it looks worse than the x-ray does early on. And then later on, the x-rays will get worse. So when we look at normal and arthritic joints, that normal joint on the left, you'll see again, that beautiful, smooth contours. And I wish I had a pointer here to show it to you, but I can't in a Zoom session. But you can see there's this nice, pretty space. And then you see osteoarthritis, where the space is completely worn away. And because the bone is now grinding away, it creates secondary inflammation. That's different than rheumatoid arthritis, where your own immune system is destroying all the stuff that supports your joint. And as that stuff gets inflamed, that causes your cartilage to wear away as a secondary problem, so rather than a pr primary problem. This is what osteoarthritis looks like, and many of you may appreciate this. Look at the tips of the fingers, all those little nodularities that are going on. Look at the bottoms of the thumbs, the swelling that are going on. Versus in rheumatoid arthritis, you'll see that some of the bigger knuckles are usually affected more. All right, and again, we take a look at nice uh, normal fingers on the left, but looking at the wrists on the left, look at those wrists. There's no space between the bones anymore. That's osteoarthritis. If you look on the right, you'll see some fingers. And again, look at how the bigger joints have beautiful spaces between them. But when you get to the small joints of the fingers, those joints are beginning to collapse. And again, I wish in more person, I would normally be able to show you that with a pointer. So in osteoarthritis, it starts down at the tips of our fingers, and you'll see these nodularities begin to develop, and everybody will come in and go like, I have a tumor. You don't have a tumor, you have arthritis, okay? And what happens is, is those bone spurs start to creep up and create these deformities, because unlike in the middle of your thigh, where you can hide deformities in your bone, in your fingers, you don't have any muscles or fat. So any little change to your bone becomes very, very visible to the naked eye as you look at your fingers. And if you look at this person's fingernails, you'll also start to see some ridges to the fingernails. And that's because the bone spurs are actually pushing on the origin of your fingernails and starting to make the fingernails get kind of uh, uh, roughed up and rugged in addition to the nodularities. Very early in the arthritis, some people will come with this and say, oh, I have an arthritic spur. Well, this is not actually an arthritic spur. This is something called a mucus cyst. And word to the wise, don't stick a pin in it, please, all right? That's a great way to give yourself an infection. This mucus cyst, this mucus cyst is one of the first signs of finger arthritis. As that joint cartilage begins to break down, sometimes your body will grow a cyst. That's one of your body's reactions to having the arthritis. And it will grow a cyst. And people think, oh, I'll just pop it. Okay, this cyst goes into your joint. You pop it with a pin, it gets infected. Now you have an infected joint, it's a disaster. So don't, 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 just leave it be. And if it looks like it's gonna pop, come see your friendly hand surgeon. We'll be happy to talk about uh, some options. Now, one of the most common places for people to get arthritis, women more than men, women more than men, but most common places to get arthritis is something called the basal or joint. And you can see where my finger is pointing to that person's uh, bottom of their, of their thumb. That's what the basal or joint is. And what happens in basal or joint arthritis is it starts to hurt when you grab onto something, holding on, that stack of dishes when you're trying to put it up into the closet, when you took them out of the dishwasher, or to pull that, that, pot, that folder out of the out of the uh, out of the drawer anything we have to grip with your thumb it's really gonna hurt and again same idea you're wearing away the cartilage at the bottom of your thumb and what do we have for basilar joint arthritis well we start off easy squeezy right we start off with some medications to take down inflammation maybe a supportive brace get a little worse we get a little shot of cortisone and then we'll talk a little bit later about some more aggressive so right in through here, you can see is what we do if, if you don't get better with a brace, some pills, some therapy. If you're really desperate, maybe you can talk me into doing this operation. This is actually a terrific operation to get rid of pain, but the operation involves taking a bone out of the bottom of your thumb. So again, great operation for pain. But the problem is it changes your hand. It's definitely gonna leave you with weakness. So I always say to my patients, don't have this operation unless you already feel like your hand won't let you do things. Because when I take that bone out, you're gonna lose some strength. 
and you may lose some functionality. So we don't do this, not like a knee replacement where we do it to get you like you were before. We do this because you can't do this stuff now and I'm gonna help you take rid of your pain and maybe, maybe, maybe you'll feel more functional because I help you take rid of, get rid of your pain. So again, you can see here on the progression on the left how it starts off with a beautiful thumb joint in, in, in box A, then in box B getting a little narrower, C getting a little narrower, and then by the D, we don't even have a joint left. And so what do I do? I do you a favor and I take out that nasty bone. And after I take it out, you'll see that beautiful space now at the bottom of your thumb. So as you can imagine, your thumb moves great, but you definitely lose some strength. Now moving on to rheumatoid arthritis, this is a classic looking rheumatoid hand. If you have a hand that looks like this, you don't have osteoarthritis, you have rheumatoid arthritis. And again, notice the difference. The big knuckles are involved here, right? The fingers themselves actually don't look abnormal. Where they're sitting doesn't look very normal. But if you look at that pointer finger and you cut the rest of the hand off, that wouldn't look too bad, all right? So rheumatoid arthritis, again, is inflammation. It starts as inflammation in some of your larger joints. And as the ligaments and the tendons break down around your joints, they're no longer supported. And because they're no longer supported, then they lose their cartilage, all right? So what comes first, the chicken or the egg? So in rheumatoid arthritis, again, this nasty inflammation. And in the beginning, as I said, all that swollen stuff I'm going to see when you walk into my office, but we'll take an x-ray and it might not look so bad. And again, you can see the differences are happening with the inflammation in each of these joints, which causes collapse. And again, this is the difference. On the right side is a relatively normal hand looking x-ray on the left. And think about the difference between the osteoarthritis, right? The osteoarthritis, the fingers weren't this curved. And if you'll also notice, there's something called a Z deformity. Some of the bones are going to the right, then the next ones go to the left, then the next ones go to the right. Because as things collapse in one direction, the next joint tries to compensate. So it'll collapse in the other direction. And we call these Z deformities in rheumatoid arthritis. So early, 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 like I said, you're going to walk in and tell me how much you hurt. And maybe your hands looks a little puffy. Then as time goes by, it's going to look really swollen. But your x-rays actually still look pretty good. And then by the time we get to that, that other picture on the far side, now you start to look like the x-ray that I just showed you. Now, because as I said to you, rheumatoid arthritis isn't just about the bones, it's about inflammation outside of the bones, a little off topic for osteoarthritis is tendon ruptures, all right? Because as that inflammation is settling up around your joints, the ropes, the tendons that move your joints are very inflamed. So inflamed that you can see bumps and lumps like you see here. And this person isn't just posing their hand like a princess, right? Like, like oh, I'll just point out my two fingers. They can't lift their ring and their pinky finger, all right? So if you wake up one morning with rheumatoid arthritis and you can't straighten out your fingers, it's not because your joints are worn away, it's because that inflammation around your joints disrupted your tendons, all right? You gotta come see your friendly hand surgeon. We gotta fix that so you can move your fingers. It's not a joint problem, it's a tendon problem that we see in, oste in, no, excuse me, in rheumatoid arthritis, but not in osteoarthritis. Another thing that we'll see uh, in rheumatoid arthritis are tendon subluxations. Now, again, I wish I was in front of you so I could show this with my finger, but if you look at this person's pointer finger and their long finger, look how the tendons, those, those ropey structures, are running right over the top of the joints. And then we look over at the ring finger, and where the hell is it? It's buried in between the ring finger and the pinky finger. That's called a tendon subluxation. That's also seen in rheumatoid. I bring it up in these lectures because you can also see it even if you don't have rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, I once had a woman took her grandkids to, uh, walk to Disney World and while they were waiting for their very long to be delivered supper, they were playing paper football and she kept flicking it with her finger. She did this to her tendon, okay, from flicking it. So this can happen not just with rheumatoid arthritis, this can happen with overuse as well. And again, visit to your handy dandy hand surgeon uh, if you find that you cannot straighten up your finger. So again, why do you make an appointment to see someone like me? Well, pain, right? Pain even when you're not using it or pain when you do use it. Swelling and deformities, things that make one finger don't look like the other or it doesn't look like it today like it did six months ago. Stiffness, 
you can no longer do the things that you used to do because you can't put your fingers or your wrist in the place that you need to put them to get things done, whether it's buttoning a button or getting your hand in your pocket or uh, brushing your teeth or squeezing the tube of toothpaste. Popping and snapping. Sometimes popping and snapping can be due to tendonitis and can be easily treated with some anti-inflammatory, some therapy, some cortisone, but sometimes not. Come see a hand surgeon and we can tell you, maybe we can fix it in one visit or at least give you an advice on what we're gonna do in the future. Inability to move your wrist or fingers. Now I'm not talking about after you fell down a flight of stairs, please people. If you fall down a flight of stairs and you can't move something, that could be something completely different. But you know, you wake up one morning and you can't move something, or you find progressively over time you're not able to move, once again, you're gonna come see me. And again, the important question I'm gonna always ask you once we decide it's arthritis is, what do you need to do or wanna do that you can't do? Cause that's what we're gonna work on together. All right. I'm gonna to listen to what you have to say. I'm gonna ask you about that list of activities that you're struggling with. I'm gonna find out what you've already tried. Most people just don't show a cold turkey and tell me, oh, I've done nothing. You know, most of the people are self fixers, right? You've tried a bunch of stuff. I'll examine you, that involves touching you, right? Find out where you're actually sore. Find out what's, what's soft, what feels hard. I'm gonna take some pictures using an x-ray machine in the office. And then we're gonna take all that information, what you said to me, what I saw when I looked at you, what I felt when I touched you, what I saw when I looked at your images, we're gonna put all that stuff together and we're going to come up with a diagnosis and an action plan, all right? So in terms of osteoarthritis, I can give you some tools to manage your symptoms. In rheumatoid arthritis, we can, we can manage the disease. And what do I mean by that? I preface this talk by saying that osteoarthritis is genetic. I can't cure arthritis. As I like to say to my patients, if I could cure it, I'd be rich, you'd be happy, well, life would be good, right? But you can't cure arthritis because arthritis is just this program breakdown of your, of, your, of your joint. But we have lots of tools that can make you feel better and help you manage your symptoms. That's different than rheumatoid. Remember, that's an autoimmune disease. If I give you drugs, and not me, by the way, rheumatoid, rheumatologist, give you drugs which suppresses your immune system, like Plaquenil, things like that, we can actually slow the progression of your disease. When I was in training, I had every other patient walking into my clinic with those terrible deformities that you saw a minute ago. Frankly, nowadays, it's rare to have people walk into my office with terrible degenerative joints from rheumatoid. Why? It's diagnosed early and our pals in rheumatology have wonderful drugs which can actually slow the progression of the disease. Another reason to seek help early rather than later, because there, this is a form of arthritis that we can't cure, but we can certainly slow the progression. And again, if we've missed the boat, I as a surgeon can always intervene to help get you better. Now, what are some non-surgical tools that we can use? Well, I mean, we can always start off with activity modifications. You know, you don't have to use a hand can opener, for God's sake. You can buy an electric one for $9.99 in Walmart on sale and save yourself a whole lot of trouble, right? You don't have to have an operation. Um, braces. There's a whole variety of braces. Listening to what your, where your pain is, finding out the things that you're struggling doing. With all that information, we can usually come up with an assistive device, sometimes right off, the, right off the shelf and sometimes molded by an occupational therapist, which can get you through some of the challenges that you're struggling with in your everyday life. Pain is from inflammation. In rheumatoid and osteo, the pain is from inflammation. So we've got stuff that we can do to fight inflammation. One, occupational therapy. People think of therapy as to make me stronger. No, 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 no. That's part of it. But therapists also have modalities which can take down inflammation. So an occupational therapist can do things like ultrasound and deep heat and massage and hot wax and stretches, all of which can make you feel better. Not gonna cure you, but can make you feel a lot better and therefore feel more functional. Oral medications like anti-inflammatories, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. That's what the non-steroidal stands for, okay? So NSAIDs like Advil and Aleve are out there over the counter. And if those aren't working for you, or they're bothering your stomach, we have a whole slew of, of prescription medications which do the same thing without impacting your head. These are not narcotics. These are not pain medications. These are anti-inflammatory medications. Topical steroids, stuff that goes through your skin if your stomach really can't tolerate anything. Oral steroids, prednisones and of the like. 
and then steroid injections where you put a needle right where the pain is, flood the area with an anti-inflammatory, and that can give temporary relief even if it doesn't cure things. Here are some examples of braces that we use for thumb arthritis. Some people love the rigid one, some people love the soft one. You try it out, looks like buying a pair of shoes, right? You try them on, you feel it makes you feel good. We have wrist splits for people with wrist arthritis. We have finger splits for people with different forms of crooked fingers. And again, we'll work with you, find out what's bothering you, and then custom mold something that will work for you to make you feel more functional. Some people don't need braces. Some people say, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't want to be immobilized. I just need to feel better. Okay, fine. Coban is fabulous. Coban is a soft self-stick dressing that you can buy in the supermarket right next to the band-aids in all kinds of sizes. And it's a wonderful tool because you can wrap it. You look like an athlete. Look, you don't have to play the football in the football game. You can wrap up the joints that, that bother you. It keeps them warm. It supports them gently. And it doesn't take away all your motion. So again, Coban applied properly can also be a wonderful tool for day-to-day -day pain. I do want to revisit non-steroidals because this is what's out there, right? I mean, I told you there was a whole slew. Well, there really, really is. And I do want to clear up some confusions. If you want to take a picture of this slide, please do. And if I'm speaking down to you, I don't mean to. It just seems to me in my office, people don't necessarily know which of these names that, that these are sometimes the same drugs. So again, Advil. Motrin, ibuprofen. I've had patients tell me, oh, I have an allergy to ibuprofen, but I can take Advil. No, you can't. You know, I'm sorry, but no, you can't. They're exactly the same drug. It's just a different manufacturer's name. Uh, and again, if it's prescription, it's higher dosage than what you buy in the bottle uh, when, you're in the, when you're in the drugstore. Same thing with Aleve, Naproxen, Naproxen. And then Tylenol, which is a completely different category, but I put it up here because you have to know Tylenol, acetaminophen, different category altogether. So again, anti-inflammatories are valuable because why? They take down the inflammation, anti-inflammatory, and they make you feel better. But got to be careful. Anti-inflammatories can bother your stomach. And if you've got kidney problems, they can exacerbate them or make them worse. And you certainly can't take them if you're on blood thinners, people. A lot of people nowadays are on things like Eliquis, Coumadin, Lovenox. I'm missing one. I know I am. I'm Zeralto. That's the one I'm not saying. All those drugs thin your blood out. You cannot take anti-inflammatories. It breaks my heart when I have someone come into my office and say, oh, you know, Advil works great. And then I look at their list of meds and they're on Eliquis. <gasps> you need to stop. All right, because that those now you're on two drugs which are going to uh, uh, thin out your blood and you can have severe catastrophic bleeding. So again, you need to know what non-steroidals are that are over the counter that you can access without a doctor and you need to know not to take them if you're on any blood thinners. A baby aspirin a day is not a blood thinner, by the way. All right, baby aspirin a day is not a blood thinner. But if you're on some other blood thinner, you should not be taking non-steroidals even the ones over the counter. And that's why I want to break my point again to you. Tylenol is not an anti-inflammatory. You can take Tylenol with a blood thinner. By the way, you can take Tylenol with Advil. You can take Tylenol with a leaf. You can take it in the same mouthful. It's a different category of drug. Tylenol and acetaminophen are different. Some people like to take a natural approach. All right, you can go online. This was not meant to be a great slide. I took a, a screenshot off of the computer. Look up anti-inflammatory foods on, on Google. You'll find long lists of foods, which if eaten and, and you know, supposedly keep your inflammation down. I'm not confident that it works, but certainly, certainly it's another tool to avoid foods that stir up inflammation. Other mechanical options, paraffin baths. Oh my gosh. What a great excuse to get someone to pay for you to have a spa at home, right? So if you're having arthritic pain in your feet or your hands, hot wax is a very deep penetrating heat. And again, you don't need to go to a therapist you, to, to get one of those. You come see your friendly hand surgeon, you try it out in occupational therapy. If you love it as a modality, we'll write your prescription, you pick one up at the drugstore, plug it in at home, and ta-da, you have a spa at home. And your skin will be soft. You know, you have two, two, two valuable things come out of it. Your joints will feel better and your skin will be soft. Um, steroid injections, again, steroid injections can be very, very useful in controlling pain, but I do need to be clear, they're not carrying a darn thing, all right? They're temporary measures to help with severe pain flare-ups. Acupuncture, I like to say anything that's been around for 2,000 years can't be bad, 
Uh, so again, some people do get relief with acupuncture. So again, if you're amenable to trying that, a referral to an acupuncturist is not the worst thing to do if you're having severe arthritic pain, which is not being alleviated by either mine or other homeopathic remedies. Now, if medical treatments aren't helping, that's where the surgeon after my name comes into play, right? And we have a couple of things that we can do about joints. We can reconstruct them or we can fuse them. Now, everybody knows what a joint reconstruction is because everybody knows somebody who's had a total hip or a total knee or a total she shoulder replacement, right? We take out your bones, we shove in a bunch of plastic, titanium, chromium, whatever the heck it is. And you know, now you're like the tin man, you got this great new joint. That's what a joint reconstruction is. Joint fusions are, we take out the joint, we make two bones that used to move, and we stick them together and they never move again. And you might go, horror upon horror, why would I do that? Well, sometimes we don't have a choice, okay, because it's too far gone. And to be quite frank with you, sometimes it's a better operation depending on what joint we're dealing with because we need some of our joints to move very well and some of our joints we don't need to have to have them move, okay? So for instance, if we take a look at the hand, we really, 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 really need to move our fingers at our big knuckles, like the queenly wave here, and we need to move at the first small knuckle. But if we get to the tip of the finger where we saw that mucus cyst before, you don't really need to move that joint. And that's good, because I don't have a joint replacement for it, okay? So if all of your pain is in those small joints at the tips of your fingers, I don't have a joint replacement. We can do something called a fusion. But if the bigger joints are bothering you, we can do a, we can do a joint replacement. Now, a minute ago, we talked about the thumb where I take the bone out. That's another kind of joint replacement, right? I'm not putting in cobalt, chromium, or silicone, or whatever, but I am taking out the bone and rolling up a tendon. So that's a different kind of arthroplasty. So that's a form of joint replacement as well. But fusions, again, are where we take about a joint. And the two joints in, as a hand surgeon that I like to fuse, I don't like to fuse anybody's joints, but they're the ones that work very well, are wrist fusions, that your wrist motion, taking away your wrist motion when it's terrible and taking away the very tip of your finger because it's not moving so great, all right? Or because it's terribly painful, all right? And I will let you know that these wrist fusions, I have guys who are car mechanics who live with a wrist fusion. It gives you back tremendous strength. And again, we're not doing any of these things until you already tell me that you're disabled by your pain. And by taking away your pain, I can actually increase your function, even though I'm taking away your motion. But that's something that we talk about. We talked about tendons rupturing, okay? So what happens when you rupture a tendon? Things don't move. So what can I do? I borrow from Peter to give to Paul, and I can do a tendon transfer. That popped over tendon we talked about. You can see that on the right. What I see when I get in there is the tendon. It's not sitting where it needs to be. So what do I do? I put it back on my top again, and then your finger works great again. So these are the kinds of things that a hand surgeon can do to make you feel better. Now, where do I do these things? Uh, I am a hand surgeon. I've been at St. Luke's Cornwall Hospital since 1996. And you know, with recent COVID, I know that people have had a lot of anxiety about coming in to get procedures done. So I thought I would take advantage of this talk just to talk about some of the amazing work that we've done here. We started doing surgeries back on May 16th of this year. Uh, the state approved us, but we were way ahead of the state because as soon as our virus uh, symptoms, be our virus uh, patients began to go down, we began to prepare. St. Louis Cornwall Hospital has a single elective entrance through no which no sick patient enters. Every person who comes in our front door has a temperature check through a thermographic uh, mon uh, monitor uh, uh, graphic that checks you as you walk in the door. We take a history and everybody and you're not allowed past the front door into this corridor until we make sure you're healthy and you're good and you're good to go. And before you show up for your elective procedure, you will have had a negative COVID test because if your COVID test came back positive, we don't let you in the door. This is actually, by the way, 10 o'clock in the morning on a weekday. So I'm telling you, this process has worked. We filter people through. And also celebrating our journey to Magnet. Our nurses just won that. We're very proud of that. This is our same day surgery area, waiting area. Any of you have been here before, know that we used to have lots of chairs piled in there. Not anymore. Your family can wait for you here and we keep them six feet apart. So in conclusion, I don't have a cure for your arthritis. You're not gonna make it worse if you do stuff. You can't prevent arthritis from stopping, but rheumatoid arthritis, we can slow the spread with medications. And for osteoarthritis and rheumatoid, we can help manage your symptoms 
both non-surgically and surgically. Thank you.